Hi everyone, welcome back to Geeks for Geeks. In this video, we'll be discussing the problem buy and sell a share at most twice. Previously, this problem has been asked in companies like Amazon. And in this problem, we will be given the price of the stock in an array. So basically, price of I will indicate the price of the stock on the ith day. And what we can do is, we can do at most two transactions and we have to tell that what is the maximum profit that we can get. So before talking about two transactions, let us think about generating profit in the stock market. So when do we generate profit in the stock market? That is the first thing that we need to realize. So in order to generate profit in the stock market, what we have to do is if we have to generate profit, then we can say that for generating profit, we have to buy low. Okay. We have to buy at a cheaper price and what and sell high, right? Buy at a lower price and sell at a higher price. So in this case, suppose that if I allow you to do, do only one transaction, if I allow only one cycle of buying and selling, that is buying and then selling, then what is the maximum profit that you can generate? How can we check that? So assume that we have an array. Okay. Assume that we have an array and suppose that the array is what? Suppose that will be given a prices array. And the prices are is like uh, we have got two, then we have got uh, let's say seven, then we have got uh, something like let's say we have got eight, then we have got what? Let, let's say we have got uh, one, then we have got uh, three, then we have got nine, and then we have got what? Let's say we have got uh, six. Okay, this is the array that we have got. So if uh, we have got this array, so always we need to understand this thing that if I am planning to sell, okay. So before that, I should have already bought the stock. So on the very starting day, that is uh, when I is equal to zero on that day, I can never sell. That is one thing, right? And if I am planning to sell a stock on the ith day, okay, if I am planning to sell the stock on any ith day, then before that, all the days that are there, I will try to keep a track of the minimum price before the ith day, right? Such that I will say that if I am planning to sell the stock, on the ith day right so then what will be the profit the profit will be nothing but price of i is fixed that is on the ith day if i am planning to sell the stock then uh, i have to make sure that in order to get the maximum profit uh, if my selling price is fixed that is price of i then my uh, cost price should be minimum so before this ith index whichever days are there i should keep a track of the minimum price and that I should subtract from the ith price. That is how I can uh, get the maximum profit by selling on that day, right? So this is the logic that we'll have. So let us quickly iterate through this logic and see what we can do here, right? Basically, this is normal buying and selling stock uh, one kind of problem. Okay, so what we'll do here is, let me change the color of the pen here, right? So initially we'll mark the minimum as what? We'll mark the minimum as two. We'll say that, okay, the minimum uh, cost price is two because uh, you cannot start from uh, selling from the zeroth index because you cannot start selling on the very starting day, right? Then after that you go to seven. Now you will keep a track of the maximum. Initially your maximum will be something like uh, zero or negative infinity, right? Then you will check what is the current profit that you get. So the current profit that you will get is nothing but 7 minus the minimum, right? 7 minus 2. That is price of i minus the minimum. So this is 5. Is 5 greater than the maximum profit that I have achieved so far? Yes. So the maximum profit will get updated to 5. Then after that, uh, we'll move to the next day. So let's say we move to uh, this day. Also before moving, I will check. Is 7 lesser than my minimum? No. So this means that still the minimum cost price is uh, two only okay because uh, seven is not less than two okay so after this what will happen is then we'll move to the next index so we move to eight now we are planning to sell the stock at eight so eight uh, minus the minimum so minimum cost price before that is what two so eight minus two is six so is six greater than the maximum yes maximum is five and the current profit that i'm getting is six so it is greater so i'll update the current with six here now, after this, what we'll do is before moving away from this ith index, that is from this uh, element 8, we will check that is 8 lesser than the minimum. No, it is not. So this means still till this index, the minimum cost price for me would be 2 only. Then after that, we move to the next uh, index that is 1 and we check 1 minus the minimum. So if we want to sell at a price of 1, right, and the minimum cost price is 2. So 1 minus 2 would be minus 1. Is minus 1 greater than the maximum? No. So in that case, I will not update. 
and before moving away from this index i will check is the current element that i am at is it lesser than my minimum yes so then i'll say that my minimum uh, cost price uh, would get updated to one here right then after this what will happen here is uh, that will uh, move forward and will move forward to the uh, element three now the profit would be what uh, the price on the ith day that is three minus the minimum that is one so we'll get the profit as what two is the current greater than maximum no it's not so this means that we still need to uh, iterate further and before that before moving away from this element three we check is three lesser than the minimum definitely no so in that case since three is not less than the minimum so we'll move forward directly without updating the minimum then we go to the next index that is nine and when we go to this index so what will be the current profit that i will achieve current profit will be nothing but the price of the stock on the ith day minus the minimum so price of the stock on the ith day is nine nine minus the minimum that is one is basically coming out to be eight so is the current profit that i'm getting is it greater than my maximum profit yes so the maximum instead of six it will get updated to eight now okay and before moving away from this element nine i'll check is uh, nine lesser than the minimum no it's not so the minimum will not get updated minimum uh, cost price of the stock will still be one right now after that we move forward to the element six and when we move here so price of the stock is six minus the minimum price that is one so the profit i get currently is five is it greater than the maximum profit that i have achieved no so the maximum profit will still be five here and you can see that at the end of the day i am getting the maximum profit as how much i'm getting the maximum profit as nothing but eight because i'll get the maximum profit when i buy at one and sell at nine so the profit will be what the profit for me will be nothing but eight here i hope that this is clear so this is how we uh, solve the problem when we have to buy and sell only one time but in this problem they have asked two times so let us write the pseudo code for uh, buying and selling one time only then we'll uh, also talk about buying and selling two times okay so what we will do here is guys we can simply say that we will have a profit variable let's say okay and initially we can mark it as uh, negative infinity or something okay so let me mark it as negative infinity so initially the profit will be negative infinity after that what i will do is i would say that my minimum uh, cost price initially would be what it would be let's say a of zero or you can say price of zero then we will start i starts from one because we need to start from the index one here right and then i is lesser than n then we need to do i plus plus then we will check what is the current profit so the current profit will be what guys the current profit will be nothing but the price of the stock on the i date that is a of i or p of i whatever it is given minus the minimum right then i will check if the current profit that i am getting if it is greater than my maximum profit that i have achieved so far then my maximum will get updated to the current guys that is what it needs to be right and before moving away from this index i'll also check that if the element at the ith index if it is lesser than the minimum so this means that at the ith index uh, like uh, i have got a new minimum cost price so i'll say that minimum will be equal to a of i and in the end we'll just return the profit uh, so instead of profit let me declare this variable as mx i can declare it as profit or mx anything right so at the end we will return what we'll return the maximum profit that we have achieved and for doing this you can see that how much time we took we took order of n time okay because in terms of time complexity we just iterated throughout the array and we only took variables so the space complexity was order of one but in this problem they are saying that you can buy and sell the stocks at most twice so you can do it two times so now if you can do it two times so you know that uh, what you have to do is basically suppose that if there is a transaction right so you have to understand one thing that suppose that if what you did was at a particular point of time right suppose that at a particular point of time let's say this is buying one okay and suppose that you bought at some price and you sold at some price right now what happened was because of this you got a certain profit okay in this cycle let's name it as profit one okay and let's say this profit is equal to what let's say this profit is equal to 10 now again you are going to do what you are again going to buy the stock right at any ith index now you are going to buy guys right so if you are going to buy and let's say this buying price is what let's say it is uh, something like 30 here 
Oh, okay, let's say it is 30. Let's say the buying price is what? Uh, later on at IIF index, the second time when you will try to buy. So it is 30. So since you have already achieved a profit of 10, right? So in this buying and selling transaction, you can see that you have got a profit of 10. So now second time this uh, buying price that you are having, it is showing 30, but you have to pay only 20 because effectively you have got a pro profit of uh, 10 here. So the minimum two that you can say or the second uh, minimum price or the second buying price would be what? It would be nothing but the minimum of uh, MI2, uh, okay, comma what, comma the uh, price of the stock on the IA day minus the profit, okay. Like earlier what we were doing when we were finding the minimum one, so we were uh, checking that if, uh, like if it happens, then we were checking what, earlier when we were uh, buying, uh, so buy, uh, minimum one was what, minimum one was nothing but it was like we were updating, if the IA element was less than the minimum one, then we were updating it, right. So we were finding the minimum possible A of I. But uh, here in this case, what is happening is, suppose that in the first transaction, if you have scored a profit, let's say P1 as 10 after the first transaction. So now when you go to buy for the second time, then if the price suppose is 30, so then you have to only pay 20 rupees effectively from your pocket because of the fact that you have already scored a profit of 10. Okay, so this is the main thing and uh, because of this, let's say later on when you will sell now, so when you are going to sell, so suppose you uh, sell it at a price of 50. So here you will say that uh, your buying price was effectively 20, effective buying price was 20 and you sold at 50. So the profit that overall you got is 30. So you will return what? You will return the profit 2 here because profit 2 will tell you the overall story here, right? So I hope that this makes sense because what we did was like the profit that we got from the first cycle, right? Let's say profit one we got from the first cycle directly, right? After that, what we did was when we bought for the second time, so at whatever price we bought, right? What Let's say it is B2, whatever price we bought it at, we tried to uh, buy it at minimum. So let's say it is stored in MI2 and then whenever I'm going to sell, so I'll try to sell it whenever I'm getting the highest current profit for the second time, right? So this is how I'm going to maximize my profit. And at the end of the day, when we'll return profit too, so it will indicate the maximum profit that we can get if I do buying and selling two times. So I hope that this part is clear that basically if in the first cycle you have uh, scored a profit as profit one, let's say as 10, then next time for the second uh, buying cycle, when you are going to buy it at when the buying price is written as 30, so actually you need to pay only by uh, the price of uh, the price minus the profit one that you have already made. And at the end of the day, you will just return profit two here. You can try to dry run it. Let's try and code this up uh, in order to understand this uh, approach better. So what we'll do here is we'll simply say that firstly, we need to have certain variables, right? So we need to have, let's say M MX1 initially as int min, okay? Then we need to have int MX2. Uh, let me name them as profit one, profit two. So that would be better. Okay, profit one. Uh, so profit one is the profit that I'll get on the first transaction and, and profit two is the final profit that I'll get after the second transaction. Because why I'm not considering profit one? Because profit one I'm using while buying uh, for the second time, right? So I'm getting a discount. So yeah, initially I'll mark it as int min as well. Okay, then after this, uh, what you need to do is you need to have a minimum uh, one initially marked as int max, right? And then you also need to have uh, minimum two also, right? Because uh, like you need to uh, know the first minimum and the second minimum here. After that, what you will do is you'll iterate. So you can say that I will start from zero. Okay, I will be lesser than uh, the size. Uh, so prices dot size. Then after this, what you will do is you will do an I plus plus here. Now after this, what we will do here is we will say that uh, firstly, what is the circumstance? So the circumstance is that like firstly, we need to do what when we are iterating here, right? So if we are iterating here, so we need to check that what is the minimum buying price, right? So we need to get the minimum buying price first of all. So we'll say that if uh, it happens that the price of the stock on the IA day, if it is less than the minimum one okay so if it is less than the buying price one then in that case the buying price one would be updated to price of i here okay after this part is done then we need to check suppose that my minimum one is ready and suppose that if i am going to do what current profit one let me write it as current one here okay so current one will indicate the current profit one that we can get so suppose that i'm doing the first transaction only and i'm going to sell it at the ith price right uh, on the ith day i'm going to sell it so that will be prices of i minus minimum one 
okay and then what i will check i'll check if the current one is greater than my profit one then in that case i need to update my profit one as what guys i need to update my profit one that is the profit from the first transaction as current one this is the code that we had written for the uh, dry run of the sample scenario when i was allowing only one transaction also guys right so this part is fine now after that what you will do is you will say that now we need to optimize on the minimum two so the minimum two or the second buying price assuming that the first transaction is done now the second minimum would be nothing but basically the minimum cost priced two okay so now what you will do is it will be nothing but the minimum of the current minimum two that i have already stored comma what uh, comma you can say the price of the uh, stock on the ith day minus the profit one because whatever profit i have already stored right in the first transaction that needs to be discounted from here okay so that is how i'll store the second minimum or you can say the second cost price right after that i'll check that in the current two so the current two will be storing what current two will be storing the profit that i'll get on the second transaction after the second transaction right so what it will be it will be basically if i sell the stock on the ith day so it will be nothing but price of i minus the uh, minimum two okay where minimum two is the minimum price at which i bought uh, the stock second time right and here in the minimum two we are considering that we are subtracting the profit from the price so that we can get the stock at the discounted rate okay then if this uh, current two suppose if it is greater than my profit two then in that case what we need to do here is we need to say that we need to update our profit two that is the final profit as nothing but current to here okay and once this is done then at the end we will simply return our answer here so let us return uh, the profit 2 because profit 2 will finally be calculating or storing the overall profit that you will get from the two transactions because we have used profit 1 already uh, while buying the stock for the second time so let me just uh, change something here so this is s i will remove this i'll remove this also I guess we have been given the price error so price i will write here i hope every at every place price is written let's try and run it and see if it is working fine on the samples or not so there is a compilation error here so am i one uh, okay so i'll update it as minimum one right so this is how i need to update it here also i'll update it like this and then minimum two okay i guess rest of the places it is written correctly let's see so still at one place i have not written it correctly the first place yeah minimum one now let's see so you can see that it is working fine on the sample test case right let's try and submit this code to check if it is getting accepted or not so you can clearly see that our code was able to pass all the test cases in the very first go and it was able to get accepted right and talking about the companies which have asked this particular problem so amazon and facebook are the companies which have asked this particular problem if you will see the time complexity and the space complexity so for this particular problem the time complexity is going to be nothing but order of n because we are iterating through the array once okay and the space complexity is going to be order of one because we are not using any extra space if you have understood this problem clearly and as i mentioned this problem was asked in amazon as well as in facebook so if you understood this clear explanation right so make sure to comment plus one or understood in the chat okay and make sure to like uh, this video share this video with your friends thank you for watching this video guys and keep coding